don't mind. You jina ha ni jina ha ma Vince TV. Me ni me nua sofe sofe abo aten. Vince TV dia Toronto ha se upe ni jia e Vince TV. Our SM ni jia interviews. Bibi bia e ye ye wedding. Upe so bo hu de ra e ye baby shower. Yes. Everything. Yes. Vince TV. Se wo kwa TV TV ya. Neche se wa yira kwa yi. Vince TV diye no size. No size. Enti uwo toronto ha mkwa diya. E wo se wo follow Vince TV. YouTube. Instagram. Facebook. Baby ya. E ye Vince TV. Number one. No size. Social media. Every social media handle. It's Vince TV. Yes. Just watch Vince TV. Subscribe. Like it. And yes. then we go forward. Yes. Everywhere. We love you. This TV all the way. Mm. If you are dressed in her traditional regalia, I don't make her come and join you where you are seated. Unfortunately, she, I don't think she brought her queen motherly accoutrements. But let me acknowledge you and thank you very much for joining us. We know that um, we are not supposed to do uh, politics as the Supreme Court has said and our constitution says, but um, we are happy that you've taken time to come and lend your presence to this uh, occasion. And so we, we are grateful. I have several friends and wives. <laughs> And then the logo, Michael. Michael is somewhere. I'm sure he's here. I'm here. Ah, there. Come on, go. be himself, you know. I'm here. Dr. Selom. Dr. Selom should be somewhere here. Okay. He's doing wonders in Ghana. Yeah, look at him at the back. He's doing it from the United States because of this event. You know, and so, you yeah, And Mr. Johnson should be somewhere. Yeah, Mr. Johnson. Hi, how are you? Good, good, good. Thank you. And indeed, so many people that I cannot uh, all acknowledge. But let me acknowledge my entourage, Dr. Kalistus is my administrator in my office, and um, he is in charge for directing me, you know what to do. Uh, Stan Dogbe should be somewhere. He handles media and communications and logistics. And so Stan, shout out. Uh, Joyce Bauer, uh, who's my niece, who was deputy minister, is Somewhere I think she's oh, risen a bit, mm. and um, I have um, uh, Francis, my photographer, presidential photographer, <laughs> who, who got married just recently. <laughs> <laughs> and so he didn't finish his honeymoon when I took him and brought him here. So we'll go back and he'll complete the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Malik, the videographer, who's here with us too. But aside from that, I also have. Um, I consider them my children. My my friend who is late, you know, Osi was a very close family friend. His two kids are here, Kwesi and uh, Nanama. I'm sure they're in the back there. Okay, do it. Shout out. <laughs> and then my son uh, Jesse is here. He's in university in Toronto. Yeah, so he's joined your ranks. <laughs> How do you call people from Toronto? We are in the same university, uh, Jordan, who is sitting right next to him. And then my celebrity son, uh, <laughs> Sharaf. You know, he's so well known, I went somewhere, and of course some ladies saw me. And they said, hey, Mama, it's good to see you. And one of them asked me, he says, Oh, so you're Sharaf's father. <laughs> I said, no, Sharaf is my son. <laughs> you know, and so uh, that is life for you. And so thank you very much. And let me acknowledge um, Madame Lodina. Um, our paths have intersected. We did not deliberately come here. She was coming to see her, ch her child and um, you know, look after the child. And I was going to Halifax because I've been invited to give a speech on slavery and colonialism oh. to 
a conference of universities studying slavery. Mm. Of course, for those of you who know, my first degree was in history, so I take an interest in, in history. And so I delivered a paper at that conference. And it was tempting, you know, to combine meeting the NDC chapter with this trip. So the main reason was to go for that conference. And I said, look, while I'm in Canada, let's see how our NDC fellows are doing here in Canada. And I must tell you, I am, I am impressed. In Ghana, most people have the thinking that NDC is not very vibrant here in, 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 in Canada. Look, we have a very strong, vibrant, energetic, enthusiastic chapter here in Canada. And so let me congratulate you for the warm welcome you gave me from the airport. We came out, I thought we were just going to go into our car and then drive to the hotel. And then suddenly in the baggage hall, the door bus opened and so many of you were at the airport and they didn't care. I mean, who were there? They were shouting, you swear, it's out now, who were things. And all the travelers were looking at us and saying, I'm like, who are these? <laughs> no, but they couldn't give a damn. They just went ahead and gave me such a hero's welcome. I'm so uh, thankful to you. And so um, let me just say a few words. This today is for fundraising, but having come, I must talk a bit about our nation and also our party and then how we are preparing and gearing up for the 2024 uh, election. We all know that in 1992, the fourth Republican constitution was passed and it was passed with a lot of excitement. Ghanaians were tired of military government and so wanted to go back to democracy, wanted to go back to constitutional government wanted to go back to rule of law, wanted to go back to respect for human rights, wanted to go back to freedom of speech. And we came to the conclusion that, look, democracy is the best uh, form of government for us. Because under democracy, you can hold your government accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the same with the military government. Military governments are not accountable. And they do what they want. You can't question. You must just obey. Yeah. And it's not even obey before complaint. Obey, no complaint. <laughs> you know. And so we all look forward to the new democratic government with enthusiasm. Of course, we held a referendum, we adopted the constitution, and then we held elections. And then um, President Jerry Rawlings of blessed memory won that election in 1992 and was sworn in as the president for the first time. I said in my final speech when I was president, that ours is like a relay where one runner hands the baton over mm -hmm. to the other. Mm -hmm. It takes teamwork to win a relay race, but everybody has to exert individual uh, God. God is new from coup d'etat. I don't say there should be a coup d'etat, but I'm saying that the guarantee to avoid having a coup d'etat is that the political leaders must govern properly under a democracy. We must eschew the arrogance. If you are elected, I know anytime I say this, they say, don't go and bring that your father for all, father for all matter. You know, but we have, look my husband. <laughs> I think the father for all his one is <laughs> taking uh, you know. But we have just one nation and we want to make it better for those of us who are back home and for those of you who are here. Mm -hmm. So that when you come back home eventually, yeah. you come and meet a, a country that is prospering, mm. that is conducive for business, is conducive for retiring, is conducive for whatever you want to come and do. And that is why we need to work hard to make sure that, you know, we change the course. They thought that governance was an easy thing. I mean, can you imagine that Anakufa just said that? 
I will transform this nation in 18 months. Yes, he transformed the nation, but he transformed it negatively. He took us back. And so we were vilified, but they say vindication lies in the bosom of time. And so my response when I handed over in 2016 was that I leave it to posterity to judge. Because there was nothing else I could do. You know, I'd lost the election. So here you are. Posterity will judge if I did my best or I didn't. And um, when you read the Old Testament, God's vengeance used to come after generations. I think God has gone digital. And so now he delivers the judgment very quickly, very quickly, chapter. <laughs> and so when I told them, I said, you've not been in government before. You don't know what it is like to be president. You know, they did not understand. Today, I'm sure they understand oh, yeah. that it was not an easy walk in the park. And so we have to work hard. 2024 is a battle for the soul of our nation. 2024 is a battle for the future of our nation. And so it's one of the most critical elections we're ever going to have in the history of the Fourth Republic. Currently, our country is going through some of the harshest economic crisis we've ever had in history. We have gone bankrupt. We've declared default that we can't pay our debts. So we're asking our creditors to forgive us some of our debts. The domestic debt exchange has been done, and people have had to take haircuts. When we said there was going to be haircuts, the president said there will be no haircuts. And today we all know that that was not true. There have been haircuts. Poor pensioners are having to struggle because they cannot lay hands on the investments that they did. You all here know that the safest investment you can make is in a government instrument. I mean, there's no way government will ever renege on an instrument that you have invested in. But unfortunately, in Ghana, we have learned the harsh way that it was all a mistake. And so people who invested in government instruments, you know, have either lost their money or they are going to be repaid probably at a time when they will not be alive because they've stretched out the repayments after the haircut, reduced the coupon rates, and some of the payments will take place in 2030, 2035. Who knows whether he'll be alive at that time or not? And many of these people are poor pensioners who have retired and went and put their... OBC and the empowerment of women has touched the hearts and souls of many. This citation stands as a testament to the extraordinary dedication of Her Excellency Lordina whose tireless efforts have illuminated the path of compassion and social responsibility. So on behalf of the entire Women's Wing of NDC Canada Chapter, myself as the Interim Canada Chapter Women Organizer, and I have Mavis, Comrade Mavis, who is our host here in Ontario, and Comrade Bridget from Quebec, we wish to present this to you. Thank you very much. Another round of applause, please. This is our incoming first lady. Can you, you can do a better job. That's better. Thank you. Anthony Oppie. Please, one picture pair, stand. Anil Esumai, Esumai, Anil. Ebenezer Obi, Ebenezer Obi, Samuel Hager, Samuel Hager, Doug Scott, Doug Scott.
Vincent Bates. Betty in Petia, Betty in Petia, pay your money. Betty in Petia, Samuel Dark. Samuel Dark, pay your money. Betty, pay your money. Samuel, pay your money. Sophie Osman, please make a line up here. When you hear your name, just line up so that it will be easy and faster for me. Sophie Osman, Peter Treme. Unless I mention your name, because I need the money. Sophie Osman, Peter Chreme, Tio Ewufu, Prince G. Trench Bar, the Jean King Yendo Mopaya Kibet. He said, Bienvenue. Thank you. 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 Thank you.